After we place the curtain walls, we still have to place the partition wall as well as the exterior wall. In this project, we use the various wall types, which unfortunately Revit does not have a family for. So in this case, we have to customize those wall types according to the specifications as well as the drawing details. Let's go to um, Plan Grid and look at page A1.0. And on the right hand lower corner here, you will see the legend to wall types. You have type A through D. Four different type of walls here. A, B, C are for partition walls and D is for the exterior masonry side wall. However, this is not in the story, so we still have some other wall types which can be examined on the section views. So let's go to join A 3.0 and you'll find out right above the curtain wall we placed a moment ago, you will find that there is a different type of if assistant. Okay, it's a very uh, commonly utilized commercial wall types there, as well as the pilaster. Okay, so you have pilaster on the um, front and you also have some side pilasters which can be and find here on page A3.1, you have this little section at a side pilaster. So together we have about seven different types of walls that needs to be customized before we actually place them in the model. So let's get back to our Revit uh, model. And uh, to customize the wall types, we can use go ahead and use the wall command. And um, to start with the customization of wall, it's great to use um, actually an existing wall as a template, so that way you don't have to start from scratch. So in this case, we start with type A wall. Uh, examine the join and will actually tell you, okay, um, type A wall is actually a partition wall with two layers of gypsum boards on each side, and in between you have six into metal studs. Okay, and uh, 25 gauge metal studs uh, designates the thickness of the metal studs. Gauge is a unit used to measure the thickness of metal. Um, the bigger the number, the, s the thinner the uh, metal is going to be. So 25 gauge is actually s uh, thinner than 18 gauge. And also, uh, one thing I have to remind you is the insulation. In Revit, um, it would not allow you to place two different components in the same position. In this case, when you have metal studs here, and your insulation obviously are um, placed in the space between those studs. However, you can't place the insulation in the Revit model because it would not allow you to have two different type of materials in the same place. So throughout the project, we're going to ignore the uh, insulation. Uh, where do you get, uh, where are you going to add those insulation? Probably in your section detail views, uh, which is really sort of beyond the scope of this project. But anyway, you have to understand we do need insulation sometimes when actually specified in the join. So in this case, we're going to customize wall on uh, top A. Um, wall here, and uh, it's obviously a partition wall with a one hour okay fire rating right here. This one hour designates fire rating, and two layer gypsum boards, five eighth inch each. And tap X gypsum board is actually a fire rated a gypsum wall board. That's why you're using tap X. So with that information, we're going back here, and we're going uh, we're going to select an existing wall that is closest to the uh, type of wall we're going to place. So in this case, I'm going to add the five and a half inch partition wall with one hour fire rating as our baseline. Okay, you probably get an error message here that says the top of the wall uh, is lower than the base of the wall. We'll just go ahead and reset the constraints and select that wall type again. Okay, but that is um, not a big deal. Now, in order to customize the wall, we need to go into edit type. Okay, uh, rule of thumb, okay, before you customize any existing wall families or any other Revit families, the first thing to do is actually duplicate. Go ahead and click on duplicate and what we're going to do is actually to change its name to match what is being specified in the join. So we'll call that type A wall. Okay, now it becomes your wall. You can go ahead and click on edit structure and to examine exactly what kind of assembly do you have here. So in this case, we don't really need uh, two layers of gypsum boards at the interior side. So we can go ahead and delete one of them. Okay, and again, what you're going to change in this case is the only thing you need to change in this case is actually the metal studs. So metal studs itself actually has six inches instead of like three and five eighth inch according to the join. And um, the here on the left hand you will see the preview. Okay, and uh, that's a section preview. When you move your mouse away uh, in different layers, okay, if you zoom in a little bit. You actually see wherever you click on the layer, that layer has been highlighted in bluish color. Okay, so that would give us a total of a seven and a quarter inch uh, thick wall, which exactly the case 
being specified here. So seven and a quarter. Okay, two layers of gypsum molds and a six inch twenty five gauge metal studs. So that is our tab A wall. Now click on OK, and we're not going out yet. Okay, remember this is only tab A. We're gonna continue. Okay, to create our tab B, C, D, and the rest of the other three exterior wall types. So go ahead and duplicate again in this case and call that type D, type B. Uh, and then the only thing you need to change, if you compare those two, except for the uh, insulation, of course, we can know that insulation part. The only difference between those two wall types is actually the thickness of the metal studs. Uh, here is 6 inch, and this one is 3 5 eighth inch. So in that case, we're going to change that to 3 5 eighth inch. Okay, so that becomes our type B wall. And click on OK and um, duplicate again. Okay, and then we'll call that type C wall. Okay, type C wall really um, is not much different either. And because the only difference here is they changed the, uh, the drywall, which literally is also the gypsum wall boards here. Okay, and it's half inch. So one of the problems with the drawing here is the inconsistency, inconsistency between the naming conventions. So here on the note it says gypsum wall boards, but here it says drywall. Um, but they are still the same thing. So half inch drywall or gypsum boards on both sides. In this case, you need to update that. Change 5 eighth inch to 1 half, uh, to half inch. Okay. And that's type C. Now type D wall is kind of different because type D wall is no longer gypsum boards based. It's actually an 8 inch concrete masonry block with 1 5 8 inch metal furring which is literally a small metal studs and a 5 8 gypsum board. The insulation again, it's this is rigid insulation still is actually snapped between the uh, metal furring so we're still going to ignore them. Okay, So what we're going to do is actually choose an existing wall that is close to masonry wall then customize it. So in this case, we're going to change the wall type that we need to duplicate to an uh, 8 inch generic masonry wall. Okay, so 8 inch generic masonry wall first. Then we're going to duplicate that and call it type D wall. Okay, so what we're going to customize is actually going to add two layers because at this moment you only have one layer, which is the structural concrete masonry wall. And uh, notice that the thickness of the concrete masonry wall is not 8 inch but 7 5 8 inch. That is because the 8 inch concrete masonry wall is only the nominal size. Uh, the real size is actually 7 5 8 inch because when you actually lay the concrete masonry units together, you are supposed to provide mortar, uh, which is we the bounding agent that. Uh, about the two layers of uh, concrete units together. So that 3 8 inch was compensated for that purpose. So in our case, we need two extra layers in this case, and I'm uh, going to move those two layers down. Okay, and um, what you need is the masonry wall is going to be the exterior side. Anything at the top layer is geared towards the outside, anything that is below this core boundary is actually supposed to be the inside. So in this case, the metal furring is not really a structure component, rather it's a substrate component. And the, the gypsum was obviously is a finished two component. Okay. So now the thickness of metal furring is one and five eighth inch and uh, the gypsum bowls itself is a five eighth inch according to the drawing detail. The last step for you to customize, this one is actually here, you have to customize its material. Uh, at this moment we add a new two layers, but does not specify the material for this particular layer. So we need to click on the by category thing, and you will see there's a little box here with three dots at the bottom. Click on that, and this will bring you to the um, material browser. Okay, so your screen might be slightly different from mine, maybe look like this, okay, that's because it did not turn on the project Autodesk material library on. Okay, so difference between those two panels here and here is this panel and has included all the material that will be used by Autodesk products. For instance, if you have already installed Autodesk 3ds Max, Inventor, Maya, they're going to use the same library. And the, here, this panel is actually only for project. It says here project materials. That means here only shows the, pro the material that has already been loaded into this project. So in our case, we're on to furring. Okay, in this case, we have metal furring. And click on OK, and we need also gypsum boards here. So you will type gypsum, and you will get gypsum wall board there. Okay, and you see here we have more type of gypsum um, here in the 
overall uh, Autodesk, Revit, uh, Autodesk library, uh, material library. So in this case, I go ahead and click load that gypsum uh, board. So that's our type D wall. Okay. Now, with that being done, you'll see that we have the type A, B, C, D wall created here, and uh, we'll still have to customize our um, other exterior walls as we shown a moment ago. Okay. So let's go to our um, section view, uh, A3.0. Okay. So let's go to this view here, and let's take a look at this wall right above the curtain wall, which is a stove front. And you see here, this wall is kind of interesting. It has the gypsum, it has an IFS system, one and a half inch. IFS, uh, IFS the words EIFS means exter external uh, insulation and a finish system. So it's a combination um, that has both insulation as well as finish system in it. It's very popular in the retailing um, commercial buildings. And also you have uh, substrates, which is really right here. Um, the substrate is actually change materials as it goes innovation wise. Uh, for this little portion here, this full foot is actually the plywood sheathing and above it is actually um, a gypsum mold sheathing. In our case, we just want to make your life easier so we're going to use the plywood sheathing across the whole thing. Now, Right under, uh, right beneath, okay, behind this sheathing, you have a six-inch metal studs there. And then you see the um, insulation material is actually being placed in the space between the metal studs. Okay, then after that, okay, behind this metal uh, studs, you still have some five-eighth inch gypsum bolts, but in between this little area here, the gypsum bolts were taken out because they have a stretch components to be. Um, um, connected with the wood itself. So you have the bracing here that supports the joists and the gutters. So in that case, that part has been digging out. However, again, to make your life easier, what we're going to do is actually just presume that all the gypsum bolts goes all the way through. So that way we have a very consistent wall type. For the um, corners here, we don't really consider corners uh, in our model yet because it's very um, architectural and very um, drafting oriented. Uh, in our case, we don't really want to worry about that part yet. So in this case, our wall is going to be consisting of the one and a half inch uh, FS system and a five eighth inch plywood sheathing and a six inch metal studs and another um, five eighth inch gypsum board. Okay, um, so. The placement is actually kind of important as well. We're going to talk about that a little bit later because you see here the grid line A is actually six inches away from the age of the uh, metal studs. So that's a very important dimension you need to understand. But now it's good uh, for enough for us to create the wall itself. So what we're going to do is going to go to the tab and we're going to choose the <clears throat> if it's uh, or metal studs as our baseline because that's the closest wall that is currently available to our customized wall. So duplicate that and call that um, exterior storefront okay and if it's so that way you know it's the if it's wall okay so click on that and what we have to change here accordingly is remember all the layers we have uh, obviously you do not have okay um, we have the FS which is supposed to be one and a half inch not three inch okay the thermal air layer in our case we do not have any thermal air layer so we're going to delete that okay plywood sheathing is going to be five eighth inch instead of three quarters inch okay the membrane, the air infiltration, infiltration membrane, we're going to leave it there because we do need that. And also remember that any membrane layer, any function that is a membrane layer, that layer has to be zero dimension because membrane layers oftentimes are measured by mil. A mil is one thousandth uh, inch, which is really, really, really thin. So that's why a rabbit would not recognize that thickness. So you have to place, put as a zero. Okay. So the, uh, also, the uh, uh, metal studs are 6 inch, which is good, and the vapor retarder, which is 0 inch, which is good. And the finish is gypsum wool board, supposed to be 5 8 inch as well. Okay? So, in that case, you have this wool completed here. Okay? So, we're done with the FS okay, system here. Then, the next wool we're going to customize is going to be the pilaster, which is one of the most challenging walls here. As we examine, okay, uh, you have a brick veneer, okay, which is a common brick, which is 3 5 8 inch thick, usually. Uh, the problem here is we do not have dimensions for the air gap in between, okay. Those things, okay, those little 
lines here designates the wall on uh, the brick tie okay so the space we assume that is two inch like we exactly confirm dimension we do not have any dimension here in this case but we just assume this is going to be a two inch air gap then you will have um the um five eighth inch exterior gypsum board uh sheathing then with a report, a report title on it and then you have the one the first layer of six inch metal studs you have an air gap okay which is three and a three quarters inch, and then another layer of um, metal studs. For this layer of metal studs, you do have insulation in between it. Okay. Then the back side of the um, wall, the pilaster is actually gonna be a five eighth inch gypsum wood finish. Okay. So those are the components of the pilaster wall. That's the regular stove front pilaster. Okay. So let's go ahead and click. And choose from the most, cl the closest wall that we have already, which is break on metal studs. Okay, so go ahead and click on edit and duplicate and call that exterior pilaster. Click on OK. Now we're going to customize the wall layers. So we do have our common break, which is 3 5 8 inch, which is good. And we're changing that air layer to be 2 inches. We leave the membrane there, the plywood sheathing, okay. Uh, we do not have that plywood uh, sheathing there. Uh, no, it's not plywood sheathing. I believe it's actually gypsum board uh, sheathing, as we see here. So it's going to be a 5 8 inch exterior gypsum board sheathing. So we need to change the material there. Okay, so it's not a plywood. It has to be gypsum. Okay. Then the uh, metal studs, we have one layer of metal studs already, and we need another layer of metal studs uh, as well as a layer of the um, air gap. So in this case, we're going to change this to be structure and change its material to uh, stud. Okay, thickness is going to be th th 6 inches, and this one is no longer the structure, but it's more like a thermal air layer. So its material is supposed to be air. Okay. And uh, this is going to be 3 and a 3 quarter inch. Okay. So we're going to have a <clears throat> um, membrane layer again, and the finish is going to be 5 eighth inch vapor retarder. Okay. So in this case, we have this very thick wall here, okay? Brick veneer, air gap, gypsum board, finish, uh, um, sheathing, and one layer of metal studs, air gap, another layer of metal studs, and a gypsum board. So that's what we have for the exterior plaster wall. Then the last wall type we're going to have is actually the exterior plaster uh, on the side plaster. And its structure looks like this, okay? So it's going to be the next page, and it's going to be this one. So it's going to be a break on CMU, okay? That's the closest type of uh, one that is uh, similar to the set plaster. So in our case, we're going to go ahead and go to uh, our break on CMU and uh, duplicate that and call that side pilaster and click on OK. And I'm trying to customize its structure here, okay? All right, so in this case, that's examining its layers. So you still have this brick veneer for sure and air gap two inches again. Okay. So then you have your eight inch okay masonry wall. And in between the masonry wall and this gypsum bolts is actually one five eighth inch okay um foot metal furring. So you see here it says five eighth inch gypsum bolts on one five eighth inch steel studs. Okay, the furring. So you need one layer, two, three, four, five different layers of component there. In this case, okay, so we have the uh, finish break, that's fine. The air gap is supposed to be two inches again. And uh, the rigid insulation, we do not have that. Um, so we'll go ahead and delete that one. Membrane, I'll leave there. And um, um, what do we need? Another um, component here is the masonry as well as the um, 1 5 8 inch steel studs and uh, the 5 8 inch gypsum bolts. Okay, so concrete masonry 7 5 8 inch is good, which is 
uh, the actual 8 inch masonry, but its real size is 7 5 8 inch. The metaphorian is actually 5 1 5 8 inch here, and everything else is already there, so which is perfect. So now we have those wall created, okay? So zoom in a little bit, just like the one you see in the join, okay? So that and our customization of walls. Okay, so from now on, you are supposed to be familiar with the way the process of customizing walls in um, Revit. And um, it's great to actually go through this exercise so you can actually understand Revit is really being flexible. Um, you know, so beyond the uh, families provided by the installation um, of Revit, you also can actually expand the family by customizing them according to the joint specs in uh, the project. So as a company, if you want to implement um, Revit, it's uh, a great practice for you to customize those wall types for the projects you're, con uh, you're constantly doing. For instance, if you're doing uh, hospitals and other healthcare projects again and again, their uh, wall assembly and interior partition walls might be the same uh, across different projects. So it'd be great for you to actually customize those and uh, create a standardized fam wall family for those type of projects. That's going to save you a lot of time in the future. Okay, so that will uh, end our wall customization. Okay, and uh, the next step we will be actually go ahead and place the wall itself. So that's I'll, I'll give you guys two examples, and um, uh, and we're gonna what we're gonna place is actually uh, one section wall here uh, at the front of the um, very front. Let's take a look at a 2.1 2.0 uh, joint here. So we're gonna teach you how to place this pilaster here and I'm going to show you how to place this little arced okay, wall here because it's not a standardized wall, it does have an arc top for those wall section. So by uh, demonstrating those two walls you should be able to finish all the other wall sections um, on your own. So we're going to actually talk about the wall placement in the next video um, uh, following this video.